Lifeboat. You are going to be a character on the boat with your other friends playing the other characters. You're going to get points for survival, points for the person who you secretly love surviving, points for the person who you secretly hate not surviving. Of course, if you happen to secretly hate yourself, then you're going to be a psychopath, and then you get three points for everybody else on the boat that dies, except for you and the person who you secretly love. Each turn represents one day at sea, where the person in the front of the boat is going to get a bunch of provision cards. Choose one, pass the rest down, and so on. Everybody gets a provision card. On your turn, you're going to get the chance to either do nothing, row, which lets you look at the navigation deck, take somebody else's provision cards, which they might fight about, which I'll get to later, or you can change seats because sitting in the front gets you first pick and sitting in the back lets you navigate, which I'll get into later. The game ends when the fourth bird is found. There's only three birds in the game, so the fourth bird must mean the game's over. And the birds are here on the navigation cards. That's the overview, now we'll get into the game. Set up. Game comes with six different decks. Here's how it works. There's a placeholder set of cards, and that indicates where the characters are sitting in the boat. And they are in a specific order given in the rules. Now you've got a stack of character cards. Shuffle these up and deal one at random to each of the players sitting around the board. So that means I know that I'm the kid. Now we're going to secretly shuffle up the love and hate cards. I'll explain these a little bit later, but remember they are a secret and they stay face down the whole game. So you might get your own love card, in which case you get double points for surviving, or your own hate card, in which case you're a psychopath, and you get three points for everybody else on the boat that dies. Okay, next thing that we have is the provision deck. Shuffle this up. And it's important to note that there's only one set of shuffling in the game. Once you run out of provisions in the provision deck, then the, the game keeps going, but you don't keep getting provision cards. Deal everybody one provision card at the start of the game. And then here's the navigation deck, which you also shuffle at the start of the game and set it here near the aft of the boat. So the front of the boat, where Lady Lauren starts out, is next to the provisions. That's going to be the person who is the quartermaster who gets the provisions and starts the turn. The kid is sitting near the aft of the boat where the navigation takes place. And when cards go into the possible stack, that'll go right here next to the navigation deck. That's set up. Let's meet the cast of characters. Your character is going to have a size to determine how many wounds you can take before you go unconscious, and a survival value for the number of points you'll get if you survive. You'll also have a special ability like double points for jewels, paintings, or cash. That only affects the end of the game. Frenchie doesn't take damage from going overboard. The kid can steal things from opponents if they're face down cards without them getting a chance to fight back. And with that first mate, he's just plain big. On your turn, Starting with the character who's closest to the net, to the provision deck, and then proceeding downwards, each character gets one action. Now your one action can be to do nothing, which is self-explanatory, or you can row, which lets you look at the top two cards of the navigation stack, and then you decide if you like them, and they go into the possible stack, or you don't like them, and they go under the deck. You can put one or both cards either under the deck or into the possible stack. We'll get to the possible stack later on in the navigation phase. Other things you can do are to change seats with somebody. Maybe I want to be the navigator. Or you can mug somebody. Hey, I like your provision card. Give me that. Both of these actions can be fought by the target. I'll explain fights in a minute. Final thing you can do is take a special action as allowed by a card. Some of these cards, like open a parasol, lets you take the action to open the parasol. So that spends your action. If this was my card, I'd turn it over and say, Aha, I've opened the parasol and now I'm immune to one thirst. I'll explain thirst in a minute. Fights. Now when somebody wants to take your place or take one of your items, then you can fight about it. And the way that works is, let's say Sir Stephen wants to move up to the front of the boat. And he says, hey Lady Lauren, for my action I'm changing seats with you. And she can say yes, in which case there's no fight. 
or she can say fight, in which case we slide her up out of line slightly to show that she is the defender and she'll win any ties, and mark her with a marker for fighting, and slide Sir Stephen down to show that he's against her and opposed, and mark him as thirsty for fighting, potentially thirsty for fighting. So now everybody else on the boat, in whatever order they want, can join in or not. These two people can offer people deals to get into the fight or stay out of the fight or whatever, but it's important to note that nothing can change hands while there's a fight in play. So Lady Lauren might say, let's say she has some provision cards, and she might say, hey, Sir Stephen, I'll give you some water, or rather, Captain, I'll give you some water if you join the fight. And the Captain can say, yeah, I'm going to join you and help out. Lady Lauren is under no obligation to actually give him the water. After the fight, if she doesn't give him the water, he's free to feel angry at her. All right, so now we've got four for her size and seven for his size is 11 against five. Even when he throws in his or, that's still not enough. However, if he gets the first mate to join him, now he's got five and eight and one is 14 against their 11. If the kid could jump in and join the fray, but he's worried about getting thirsty, worried about getting wounded, he decides to stay out of it. And Frenchie, he generally likes to stay out of the fights. So now we compare the size totals and it looks like these two get beat up and Sir Stephen gets to change places with Lady Lauren. Now if your wounds are equal to your size then you're unconscious. If it's more than your size you're dead. When you're unconscious or dead you can't fight anybody when they're trying to take stuff from you and you don't get any actions and you don't get provisions during the quartermaster phase. Try not to get unconscious or dead. Navigation. The people who rowed during the turn, let's say Lady Lauren's going to row, we mark her with a marker to show that she might be thirsty for rowing and pick two cards. If she had an oar, she'd get to draw an extra card for rowing. So these cards both put the kid overboard and if Lady Lauren happens to hate the kid, that's a good thing. Uh, this one has a bird, which means we get closer to land, which is great because she's got small size and she really wants to get to land fast. Uh, this one says everyone except Lady Lauren is thirsty and everybody who fought and everybody who rode. So she would have to pay a water for each of these two and everybody who fought and everybody who rode would also have to pay. So she likes the idea of getting off this boat sooner, so she'll put that in the possible stack and we'll put the rest of these under. Now, whoever's sitting in the back of the boat at the end of the turn is going to look at all the cards. Let's say a couple other people rode, and we got a couple of other cards in here. And the kid is here in the back of the boat, and he looks at what he's got for choices. Well, this one says the kid overboard, so he doesn't like that. That's definitely not going to happen. And he really wants to get off the boat, uh, and this one makes him thirsty. So, he's going to get rid of this one that doesn't have a bird, and he's going to get rid of this one, which names him. So this now says a bird, so great, we're getting closer to land when the fourth bird appears, the game ends, and everybody who fought is thirsty. So Lady Lauren, who doesn't, doesn't have any water, is going to get a wound for fighting. And this one says the first mate is thirsty, so the first mate would have to pay a water card. Let's just check his card. He's got a water card, so he pays that water card, and it's discarded from the game. Once the cards are out of the game, they're gone. And this says the captain overboard. So the captain takes a wound and then climbs back in the boat. And then this card goes to the bottom of the deck. And these cards go away because nobody had to be thirsty for rowing. And these guys both have to pay water because of the fighting icon. And that's navigation. End of game scoring. We found the fourth bird, so the game ends instantly. We don't even bother with who goes overboard and thirst and all that other stuff. Now we count up the victory points. So let's start with Sir Stephen. Now he died because he's got six wounds and he's only got five size. So he's dead, so he's not going to get his survival points. He loves Frenchie, so he's going to get six points for Frenchie surviving. He hates Lady Lauren. Uh, but she didn't die. So he gets a total of six points and he has no treasures. Then we move on down to the captain. The captain has got... He loves himself, so he's going to get five points for survival, plus five for himself surviving. So that's ten points. And he didn't have any treasures, so he's just got his ten points. 
First mate, so so far the captain's winning. The first mate loves himself and hates the captain. So he's got four for surviving, four more for loving himself. The captain didn't die and no points for leftover water. So the first mate's got eight points. Captain's still winning in this. Frenchie. Frenchie has, loves the kid, and but he hated himself. So he doesn't get his six survival points. He gets nine for the kid surviving, and then three for Sir Stephen dying. So he's got a total of 12 points. So far, he's in the lead. And now we've got the kid who loved Lady Lauren and hated Sir Stephen. Uh-oh, I think the kid might win because... The kid's going to get nine for surviving, eight for Lady po Lauren surviving, and five more for Sir Stephen dying for a grand total of 22. He had a life preserver, which isn't worth any victory points. And lastly, Lady Lauren, she loves Sir Stephen, so she doesn't get anything for that. And she hated the first mate. She gets nothing for that, but she, she does get eight for survival. So the kid wins. Kid's so small that he's worth so much victory points that generally if the kid survives, he has a good chance of winning. That's like book.